okay um, welcome everyone to the session i am going to start of the session today uh, uh, let's begin because uh, i don't want to wait uh, i have a few more things to do in today's class i want to cover a little bit more uh, given you have your um, um, qualifiers right is this uh, the qualifier uh, is supposed to happen on sunday am i right yes no no none here no okay anyway i think as far as i know it is supposed to happen on sunday so i have to cover a little bit of um i mean all of them cannot be obviously but then uh, at least uh, up to articles is what i'm planning rest of it is easy but um, these uh, topics may require a little bit of understanding so we'll we'll start without uh, waiting much and okay so the last class we were discussing about adjectives and adverb we discussed them so we're not going to go over it again we've had one exercise left to do in that and uh, that is what we'll begin with for today and then we also have prepositions as the last part for this particular um, <clears throat> activity okay so let's uh, begin looking at this without wasting time uh, first one here um, the soup smells dash i'm absolutely sure it's very good nice or nicely okay so as you are trying to give the answer uh, please focus on all those golden words in the sentence okay what would be the answer for the first one the soup smells dash i'm absolutely sure it's very good <clears throat> you will have to respond to it right in the class uh, we don't uh, i don't uh, say the question and give you the answer this is a practice session for you so you will have to look at the question and give the answer don't wait for me to give you the answer and as much as possible please unmute yourself and speak because i can't keep a tab on your uh, chat section since i am reading uh, what would be the first one the sorry the soup smells uh, dash i'm absolutely sure it's very good nice and nicely um so just a minute there's uh, samir and akhil and uh, um aradhya okay um aradhya and uh, one more person okay there are two akhils right yeah guys please um, unmute yourself and speak nobody wants to speak that's uh, very strange okay that means i would be the only one speaking and it wouldn't work like that if that's the case then i can just give the answers and be quiet okay uh, somebody has commented the uh, nice okay so that is uh, the soup smells nice i am absolutely sure it's very good okay that's all right uh, how about the next one
have you ever been injured have you ever been dash injured have you ever been badly injured okay that's fine that's fine <clears throat> the water in the river feels dash in the morning cold okay i am just going to go about it like this since people don't speak uh, i don't want to go over and over again and uh, you know make it look very right okay i need this money dash <clears throat> i need this money dash bad or badly badly again okay you should apologize when you are dash late lately you should apologize when you are late okay they came dash after breakfast they came directly after breakfast okay seventh one my boss is a dash respected man my boss is a dash respected man highly respected man okay eighth one is the plane was dash up in the sky highly high <clears throat> it has to be high the plane was high up in the sky ninth one it was a dash train slow slowly slow it was a slow train okay uh 10th one would be just a minute let me have to scroll this um, yeah how dash a few to help me would be nice right how nice of you to help me then i have dash finished nearly near i have dash finished nearly near i have nearly finished i have nearly finished is the answer okay the tall woman smiled at me pretty prettily prettily okay it's about how somebody smiled so it has to be prettily the tall woman smiled at me prettily the bus was going dash stopping at each bus stop the bus was going dash stopping at uh, each bus stop going slow <clears throat> right the bus was going slow stopping at each bus stop um then comes the motorways in your country are not bad badly motorways in your country are not bad yes motorways in your country are not bad correct then comes he didn't realize how dash things looked for us he didn't realize how dash things good sorry things looked for us bad hmm yeah he didn't realize how bad things look for us right uh 16 <clears throat> i dash know her hardly ha huh. i hardly know her i hardly know her then it is i haven't seen him dash late lately haven't seen him lately lately i haven't seen him lately okay that's how you write um <clears throat> i have tried dash to pass my exam i have tried hard hard i have tried hard okay i have tried hard to pass my exam correct then come he looked at us dash he looked at us dash cold coldly cold cold coldly he looked at us coldly it's about how somebody looked at you as you're defining the action so it has to be the adverb coldly then my sister is somewhere dash the shop near 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 the shop okay 
near the shop okay uh, so you can expect questions uh, from the adjective and adverb part mostly uh, assuming that you have an understanding of how both of these modifiers were they were modifiers like discussed in the last class but there are different sets of things that they modify so based on this is what you will be required to understand uh, if you have followed the lecture you know what those things are and if you were in the class last week or if you have at least watched it otherwise you will know what these uh, modify and uh, based on this understanding you will have to use uh, the uh, words or the options that's given in the exam to uh, fill up the blanks. Okay, <laughs> so uh, that's on the adjectives and uh, um, adverbs. Then we move on to uh, another parts of speech, which is prepositions. Uh, we don't have a lot of things to <clears throat> learn in prepositions. Um, as far as you know, their basic function. What is the basic function of preposition? What do they do? So if I have a simple example like uh, the book is on the table, what information does the preposition give you? It works like a connector, right? It is also like a connector, but what does it connect? Usually the function of preposition is to connect two noun elements in the sentence, right? A noun or a pronoun, anything that has nominal functions, noun-like functions. So that would include both um, nouns as well as pronouns. So their task is to majorly show relations between various nominal elements in a sentence. That is what the task of any preposition is. And while they give you that uh, information, they can give you information about the position of that uh, uh, object in relation to the other or uh, <clears throat> the place in which is found in um, relation to the other or uh, <clears throat> uh, time um, the time uh, the, its presence in time uh, in relation to the other so time place uh, position direction these this is the kind of information that uh, preposition is required to supply uh, in terms of two nominal elements given in a sentence. Okay, that's how things work. Uh, and uh, there is an exhaustive list of prepositions, but uh, I don't have a list of it, and uh, you also don't have to have a list of it. All you need to know is how they work. You should be able to identify when they appear in a sentence. That's all. Uh, but uh, in a very short time, I will talk to you about three main. Uh, preposition main in the sense very commonly used ones uh, why is that so because uh, there are certain kinds of uh, um, confusions that can prop up in their use because sometimes these uh, uh, prepositions can be used as uh, used in place of each other right so while we get there i will talk to you about that and how do we distinguish between these three right uh, so that you don't go wrong on that but rest of them they are pretty uh, straightforward they 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 only have one kind of use so whenever there's only one kind of use then uh, there is no ground for much confusion okay so we'll begin with those kind of prepositions first and then we'll move on to the ones that i told you the the more popularly used ones and the one that can create confusion with the first sentence here <clears throat> uh, you're going to fill up the blanks using prepositions uh, the prepositions that you need to choose from are uh, given in the bracket so just pick one accordingly okay <clears throat> i'd rather study and pass dash repeat the course you have instead than and besides instead i'd rather study and pass <clears throat> uh, dash repeat the course instead than besides instead read that again and see if it is uh, giving you the right meaning Instead would mean in place of, right? Does that word fit there? I'd rather study and pass. Ma'am, then could be done. Uh, then is the answer. Then repeat the course. Okay, then repeat the course. Hmm? Okay. Uh, second one, talking on phone while driving is dash the law beyond despite against. That's so easy. Against. Against the law, right? Against the law. 
third one you will receive your parcel dash 10 days within during insight within 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 10 days right so it's showing you the period between which you can expect your parcel so duration within <clears throat> okay in this case fourth one in this case you are clearly dash advantage disadvantage sorry uh, you are clearly dash a disadvantage at at a disadvantage okay so you are clearly at a disadvantage similar thing would be used if it is advantage both are going to take the preposition at okay at a disadvantage at an advantage okay that's a difference fifth one this book dash pg vode house is full of wit and humor of via by this book written written by right so you're going to choose by hmm? book is written by somebody so the book this book by pg vode house is full of wit and humor by is your answer sixth one <clears throat> my parents lived in the same city dash ages ages okay dash ages This is an important distinction. Uh, for and since both may look right, but only one is right. For period of time, you use one preposition, and for a specific point in time, you use a different preposition. Okay, which one is that? So when I say ages, does it show period or does it show point in time? What does it show? Does ages show period of time or does it show specific point of time? <clears throat> period of time, right? <clears throat> period of time for shows, sorry, ages shows period of time and uh, the preposition that shows period of time is for, not since. Okay, since is used for a specific point in time. Seventh one, the singer is French. I was dash the impression that she's Dutch. <clears throat> okay, with impression, usually the preposition used is under. Okay, under the impression. I was under the impression that she is Dutch. Eight one, the train should have by <clears throat> until about by. by now. Okay, have should have been here by now. That's the answer. <clears throat> Ninth one, I have put uh, sorry, we have put a lot of effort dash this work. Effort dash this work. Okay, with effort, it is always into this work. You put effort into something. So effort into this work. Okay. Not effort in or for, effort into this work. Some of them are also what we call as collocations. Okay. Collocations, uh, if you've uh, gone through that uh, lecture on uh, vocabulary, you know what collocations mean. Uh, there are certain expressions uh, in all languages. I think we talked about this in yesterday's live session also. Uh, <clears throat> there is no reason why as to, you know, why why should it go like that? Okay, you don't ask such question why. It's because it's a set expression, right? Uh, so with um, um, expressions like this, effort, usually what you use is the preposition used is into. Effort into something. Effort into work. Okay. Okay. Tenth one. My friend and I draw dash the coastline of Chennai dash the coastline of Chennai through, on to, along. Along. What's the answer? Along. Yes, along. You can't drive through the coastline. Okay. Uh, through requires a space. You can, now, you can drive through something only if it is like a hollow space or something, something like a tunnel. Okay. But not the coastline. Coastline, you always drive along the coastline. Okay. 
uh, on to definitely no because uh, if you have to do something uh, on to uh, something then it has to be a surface and this is not about that okay all right so uh, these are a few prepositions of course they are not the uh, all the prepositions uh, they don't include everything that we can see in english but this is just to give you a glimpse of how uh, the questions can look like right and please use a little bit of logic also while you answer uh, just don't go along and mark whatever comes first think a little bit use uh, look at each of the option and see which one fits better okay okay now from 11 onwards we are going to look at a few questions which are going to have uh, mostly same <clears throat> uh, prepositions especially the three prepositions on in and at okay these are the three prepositions i was uh, talking about they're very uh, very very commonly used ones they're more uh, more uh, frequently used ones but uh, they have their own restrictional spaces where you can use them and where you cannot use them uh, and there are cases where you can use all the three of them okay uh, or at least two among the uh, three okay but with different meanings okay grammatically they uh maybe right but the meanings that they give when used uh, with uh, different um prepositions among the three i mentioned would be different okay so to start off with an example uh, you can say i am in the classroom you can also say i am at the classroom both are right grammatically however the meaning generated in both the cases are different right what is the meaning of i am in the classroom in the classroom basically means you are within the space of that classroom right you're inside in the space of the classroom when i say i'm at the classroom basically means i could be either inside or somewhere in the premise of the classroom okay somewhere near that classroom right so the meaning is different in both the cases in would specifically mean that you're in inside that space you're in the enclosed space of the classroom whereas that would mean either you're inside it could mean either you're inside or you're somewhere near that place okay in the premise meaning is different that way um <clears throat> uh, similarly at again uh, is used to show specificity right like i told you a specific point of time uh, or specific place right uh, at this given spot or at 2 pm okay at 2 pm basically means that I'm talking about a specific slot of time, not a period of time. Okay. Um, then the third one is on, right? The third one is on. And uh, on would basically be uh, for surfaces, right? So if you're talking about something uh, that is placed on a surface or is moving um, on the surface, then you use the preposition on. Right, so that is the distinction. Uh, in would mean within a space, on would mean on the surface, and at would mean in the premises somewhere. Okay, that is uh, the difference. Okay, now let's look at these questions. Eleventh um, one, be careful. There is ice dash the roads today. road is what a road is treated as a surface so on yes correct so there is ice on the roads today krakow is situated dash the south of poland is situated dash the south of poland what would be the answer will you say on or in or at In, right in the south of Poland then comes uh, do come in don't stand dash the cold do come in don't stand dash the cold what's the answer in the cold correct huh? don't stand in the cold don't stand in the cold okay um do you know those people sitting dash the grass surface yeah so on the grass so on the grass do you mean the one dash the left 
do you mean the one dash the left in the left okay do you mean the one in the left oh sorry on the left okay do you mean the one on the left on the left is the answer do you still work dash the post office do you still work now you can yeah you can either say at the post office or you can also say in the post office okay both are correct the distinction i've already told you uh, answer would be either in or at both are correct but the meaning generated would be different that's all okay but answer can be both in and at <clears throat> 17 don't keep this medicine dash the sun You keep it? No. Between in, on and at, what will you answer? Under is fine. But you don't place anything under the sun. Okay. That expression is not uh, uh, right as far as English language is concerned. I know we use such expressions in our language, but we don't say, uh, I mean, you don't place anything under the sun. You place things in the sun okay so the right answer is in the sun don't keep this medicine in the sun <clears throat> okay i do not like this picture dash the wall wall is a surface so on the wall right on the wall correct now i met stephen dash the station i met stephen dash the station You can say either at the station, right? Or you can say in the station also. Okay. Both are correct. Similar to the post office example. You can either say at the station or say in the station. Both would be right. Okay. 20th one, let's have a ride dash horseback. Let's have a ride dash horseback. Huh? On the horse, right? That's how usually you say. So ride on horseback. Okay. Okay. Then comes um, 21st one. Look, there is an aeroplane dash the sky. In the sky. Okay. Again, in because you're talking about the space of the sky. And also um the plane is uh, supposed to be sailing in the sky right so you can ask a question why not surface right usually when you um, talk about boats you say the bo boat is sailing on the water uh, on the sea or something but uh, in the case of um, sky um, <clears throat> when we mention aeroplane you have to say in the sky because sky is considered more like an op open space Right, unlike water, water has a surface over which it can sail. But uh, although aeroplane is also supposed to be something that sails, but uh, sky is more like a space. It's not like a um, uh, it's it's not a surface which can be used to sail upon. Hence, in the sky and not on the sky. Okay. Whereas if you're talking about water, then it has to be on the uh, water. So if you talk about an aeroplane that has crash landed on the uh, river or on the ocean, then you say that it is on the um, on the sea or on the water, okay? Okay, 22nd one, uh, Mount Everest is the highest mountain, uh, okay, not this one, I think we've, we go to 24th Street, okay? The bird sitting in that tree is one of the rarest dash this region. Region. So the moment we talk about region, again, we are, yes, in, because you're talking about, again, a space. So one is one of the rarest in this region, OK? The burdens are dash the country today. Again, country, space, so in, right? The burdens are in the country today. The house dash the corner is mine. At the corner, correct. The house at the corner is mine. 
27, the picture dash the top of page 33 shows a leaf of tobacco. The picture dash the top of Hmm. Would you say at or would you say on the picture? Huh. With top, you always say on the top, right? So the picture on the top of page 30, yeah, correct. Can be both mostly on, not at, okay? Um, <clears throat> the picture on the top of page 20, because we are talking about page, right? And page is a surface. So a better choice is always to use the preposition on. The picture on the top of page 33 uh, shows a leaf of tobacco. Okay. Then, okay. The yachts are sailing dash the British waters now. The yachts are sailing dash the British waters now. What would be the answer here? Okay, on the British waters now. Uh, if now I'll tell you what's the difference here. Okay, in this case, you can say in the British waters now. I'll tell you what the difference is. If you're simply saying water, right? There is nothing, it just says water, then you can use on. But here it says what? The British waters, right? So here, they are basically defining a region within that uh, water, right? The yachts now sailing in the British water, which is why you're going to use now, since the region is specified or uh, the space is specified, we are going to use uh, mostly the um, preposition in and not on. If it had come without any of these, if it was simply the yachts are sailing dash waters now, then you could say on the waters. Okay, but because the region is specifically mentioned, the British waters, right? That's an international uh, space defined in the sea. Hence, it's a space defined, you will use in. So here you can say in the British waters now. Okay, so these, these are very small differences, but they do matter when you write, okay? 29th one, there are two boats dash the river. Now this one you tell me, what would the answer? There are two boats dash the river. <clears throat> Here you can use on, okay? If you say in, then it will basically mean that it is submerged or something, okay? So here you can use on. There are two boats on the river, okay? 30th one, there are two sentences dash the blackboard. What blackboard is a surface. So the answer would be on, correct, right? There are two sentences on the blackboard. Okay. Uh, there is a moth dash the ceiling. Ceiling again, what is this? Um, ceiling is surface again, right? So on the ceiling, there is a moth on the ceiling. Uh, there is a mouse dash the table. Table again is surface. What's the answer? On, yes, again, on is the answer. Okay, now, were you dash Prof Henderson's lecture yesterday? It definitely says lecture, but then we know we are referring to, huh, yes. Uh, were you at Prof Henderson's lecture yesterday? Yes, you can either say at Prof Henderson's lecture yesterday, or you could also say, in Professor Henderson's lecture yesterday, when you use in, you're basically meaning you're referring to the classroom. Okay, that's all. So you can either use in or at in that case. Both are right. 34, what can you see dash the picture on page 44? In the, in the picture. Hmm? In the picture. What can you see in the picture on page 44? Okay. Now, what is he wearing? What is he wearing? Dash his head. Hmm. Over his head. Ah, no. Uh, among in at on, what will you use? On. Ah, on. 
on his head right what is he wearing on his head okay who is sitting dash the chair on the left on that chair right uh, the people are not in the see this is something that people very commonly you sitting in the chair you sit on the chair you don't sit in in the chair okay so who is sitting on that chair on the left okay on that chair on the left okay, 37 who is the girl dash this picture in this picture in this picture okay, in this picture correct uh then comes who is who is the sweater dash my bed on my bed. yeah on my bed so bed is again surface so on whose is the sweater on my bed correct would you do it if you were dash my place yes. in my place in my place would you do it if uh, do it if you were in, in my place right in my place you should not play football dash the street on uh, on the street or in the street it is on the road and in the street okay so when you talk about uh, roads and street it is always on the road and in the streets okay so you should not play football in the street okay yeah so um with in on and yes anuraga ask your question no, i'm sorry by mistake it mistake. okay no problem um keep these distinctions in mind given especially with in on and at the other prepositions are not very difficult since they have just one use or so in on and at you uh, you know they they can create confusions but then if you look at what follows them uh then you you can make correct judgments so uh, like i have highlighted in most of the sentences you know all those uh, the bold and uh, phrases are basically to guide you with that okay so every time you have a question and you are confused just pay attention to what uh, follows this preposition right uh, based on what sense it gives you whether it's of a surface or a space or uh, you know a point in time or point in space right based on this understanding of yours please go ahead and mark either in on or at okay this pro problem would exist only in the case of these three propositions rest of them are fine they will not give you any troubles uh, since they've all they all have only one use so no problem as long as you understand their meaning properly you won't be going wrong on that right okay so uh, this is on prepositions and uh, i am going to close this activity and i am going to share another sheet with you that is on articles we'll discuss articles also today and then maybe we'll close for today that should be enough for you uh, yeah, you know that will clear enough confusions uh, for you rest of the things are easy the other lecture topics are uh, easy for you to understand uh, even if we have not entirely taken it up but these are some of the areas of uh, confusions for people so i thought uh, it's better that we talk about it just give me a minute i'll share that other file with you uh... okay can you see the screen clearly yes ma'am okay so this exercise is going to be in articles okay so the first set of uh, questions we're simply going to you know check uh, <clears throat> we're going to supply a and the or uh, zero article uh and in the second exercise that we have uh, i have included a paragraph kind of question uh so that you understand the usage of the definite article particular okay the first one you can do free hit not a problem uh, they are stand alone sentences but the second one we'll uh, try to do all the three of them uh, so that the, and that is particularly for you to understand how definite article works okay so let's start without wasting time the first one i want dash apple from that basket an apple ah, i want an apple from that uh, basket dash church on the corner is progressive dash church on the corner is progressive the church 
the church okay now why the church because see specifically the church on the corner not any church right since uh, it is very specifically given what kind of uh, church we are talking about you use the definite article the okay and please go through all the um, you know various rules that's mentioned in the lecture to uh, do this exercises uh, all of them will come handy you don't have to learn or by heart any one of them but just go through the examples that's given uh, in the slides and the lecture okay third one miss lin speaks dash chinese miss lin speaks dash chinese no article i think no article right so you don't use article before uh names of language or nationalities okay so miss lin speaks chinese no article required fourth one i borrowed dash pencil from your pile of pencils and pens Pencil. A pencil. Okay, I borrowed a pencil from your pile of pencils and pens. Okay, okay. One of the students said, "Dash professor is late today." Hmm. This is an example where you can either use the definite article the. You can either say the professor is late today, given the students know the professor. otherwise you can simply say professor is late today also okay so either you use different article the or you just leave it okay no article both are right then sixth one ali likes to play dash volleyball no article no article okay usually no uh, articles are used before names of games okay i bought dash okay i i bought dash umbrella to go out in the rain an umbrella hmm an umbrella an umbrella right an umbrella to go out in the rain because you have a vowel sound you're going to use an an umbrella to go out in the rain My daughter is learning to play dash violin at her school. No this is a special case. Ah, okay. This requires an article, okay, and that is the definite article. So usually the way of uh, writing this is to play the violin at her school, or to play the piano at her school, to play the guitar at her school. So musical instruments usually will require a. Uh, require an article definitely okay so and that article is the definite article my daughter is learning to play the violin at her school or my daughter is learning to play the piano at her school the um, tabla at her school or uh, what is it the guitar at her school so you have to use a definite article for sure when you are uh, um, talking about a musical instrument okay this is a special case with respect to the musical instruments alone hmm? then the ninth one please give me dash cake that is on the counter cake that is on the counter the cake the cake right the cake yes you are going to talk about the specific cake that is on the counter then i lived on dash main street when i first came to town I lived on dash main street. No, so again, one more distinction. When you are talking about roads, right? You have to use the articles. That is definite article. So if I say uh, A B road, say the Agra Bombay road. Okay. So when you are mentioning roads, you have to use articles, and that article is the definite article. The but when you are mentioning streets. then you don't have to use any article you can simply say main street i lived on main street okay when i first came to town right whereas if it was the name of a road then you have to use a use an article and that article is always the okay so i lived on main street you don't need any article there next albany is the capital of dash new york state
Do you need any article? No, we don't need any article here as well. Okay, Albany is the capital of dash New York State. No article, capital of New York State. That's all. Okay, it's very similar to saying uh, Chennai is the capital of Tamil Nadu, right? So you don't say the Tamil Nadu, right? You simply say Tamil Nadu. So Albany is the capital of New York State. That's all. Uh, my husband's family speaks dash Polish. Hmm? No, no article required. Okay, Polish because it's language, right? So with language, we don't use any articles. My husband's family speaks Polish. Uh, dash, uh, apple a day keeps the doctor away. Everybody knows the answer to this question. What is it? An apple a day. An apple a day, right. Then next one, dash, ink in my pen is red. The ink. the ink, right? The ink in my pen is red, right? So, because you're specifically talking about the ink that is in your pen, so the ink in my pen is red. Our neighbors have dash cat and dash dog. Hmm. A cat and a dog. A cat and a dog. Correct. A cat and a dog. They have a cat and a dog. Robert and Jessica went to Dash party last night. To a party. Huh, you to yeah, you can so in this case you can either say a party last night, okay, or you can say the party last night. Both would be correct, right? Um, so don't um, in the second case, obviously, it would be a case where people know which party they're talking about, but um, the other one would be some random party. We don't know. Some party they went last night. Okay. So Robert and Jessica went to a party last night. Or you can simply say Ro Robert and Jessica went to the party last night. Both the and a would be right here. Okay. Then comes next one. Can you tell me how to get to Dash Cinema from here? Dash Cinema. Okay, the cinema from here. Now here, cinema doesn't mean movie. Okay, they uh, what they mean is the movie theater. And uh, you definitely don't uh, ask people any random theater. You you have some something on your mind, right? Some place in your mind, which is why you use the definite article the, not a. You don't say a cinema from here. You definitely have to say the cinema. Okay, cinema here means cinema theater from here. Now. 18th one would be dash college is closed today. Dash college is closed today. The college. The college. The college is closed today. Okay. The college is closed today. Then Grigory is one of dash strangest people I know. Here it has to be definite article the, okay, because you have strangest. What is strangest? It is the superlative form of the uh, adjective strange. Strange, stranger, the strangest. Anything that is of the superlative quality has to have the article the along with it because it. when you say something strangest, you are saying it is the unique, like that is the only one, strangest. So since it has a unique quality associated with it, you're going to show it by uh, adding the definite article the along with it. So the strangest, the tallest, the best, the worst. Okay, it has to all the superlative forms of adjectives. They have to be uh, supplied along with a definite article the. Okay, the strangest people I know. Twentieth, I recommend you try dash tomato soup at this restaurant. The tomato. The tomato. Huh, correct. The because you know you're you're uh, specifying it. You no, know, the tomato soup at this restaurant, not any random tomato soup. So you've specified it. Hence, it has to be the. Next comes dash beer is not good for you. Dash beer is not good for you. The beer. No, no article required. Okay, beer. This is a general statement. Beer is not good for you. 
okay yes. general statements usually do not take articles along with it okay so uh, don't have to do that you simply say beer is not good for you that's all okay uh, 20 second would you like to see dash film the film. you ha huh, you can either say the or you can simply say a also a would mean any random film the would sure. mean a specific film that the person and you know okay okay 24th one i can't believe 23rd is the one we already solved so i don't know there's a repetition uh, 24th is i can't believe i failed dash yesterday's test i failed dash yesterday's test the yesterday's test no no not required you don't need any article there right why do you need any article i can't believe i failed yesterday's test that's all nothing to specify there or nothing to say anything about the te- the test already has a uh, an adjective along with it yesterday you don't need anything more there okay so simply say believe i failed yesterday's test that's all 25th do you have dash dictionary that i can borrow do you have dash dictionary that i can borrow a dictionary okay do you have a dictionary that i can borrow no need of uh, providing anything definite there uh, 26 there were many dogs in the park one dog was you are specifying now so the dog the okay if you are specifying then you are going to use the one dog was the dalmatian there were many dogs in the park one dog was the dalmatian okay 27 pandas and dash tigers are both endangered animals no article no article okay general statements so no article pandas and tigers are both endangered animals okay magda is wearing dash blue dress with red shoes a blue dress okay a blue dress with red shoes she is wearing a blue dress with red shoes bohom is dash island in the baltic sea an island an island okay is an island in the baltic sea bohom is an island in the uh, baltic sea okay then the last one here christmas comes once dash Yeah. Ah, uh, once a year. Christmas comes once a year. Okay. All right. So these are uh, some examples of uh, standalone sentences. You will, you, I think, in your exam, mostly get these kind of questions. But I have also uh, included a few paragraph questions so that uh, you know how uh, in. actual sentences and paragraphs how these articles work because that is what actually you should be knowing rather than simply knowing them uh, knowing how to use them in sentence let's uh, look at this uh, examples maybe we'll do one or two of these i think we'll just have time enough for that but that should be enough this much is enough for you to understand how articles work okay so the first uh, paragraph we have you do one thing first read it entirely and then we'll uh, check where should we supply the articles okay so read that very uh, quietly okay so i have horse of my own i call her pretty girl she is intelligent animal but she is not a thoroughbred horse i could never enter her in race even if i wanted to but i do not want to she is companion for my own pleasure i took her swimming day or two ago right 
So this is what you have. Now uh, let's see where we need to supply uh, articles. Okay. First line, I have horse of my own. Do we need any article anywhere? I have horse of my own. Could we use an article or not? We must write, I have a horse of my own. Whenever you have a noun in the sentence, you have to see to it if it requires an article or not. Some of them may not require, some of them will require. Here you are, uh, your uh, uh, noun here is horse, right? It requires because it's a countable noun and uh, it, uh, it needs to be supplied with an article. So, and that article is A. I have a horse of my own. Now, next sentence, I call her pretty girl. Do we need articles anywhere? No. Okay, here we don't need because we don't have any common noun used here. Pretty girl is the name of that horse and we don't use articles along with names. Hmm? She is intelligent animal. She is intelligent animal. An intelligent hmm. She is an intelligent animal. Okay, so that requires an article there again. But she is not thoroughbred horse. She is not what a is thoroughbred. Of thoroughbred. Thoroughbred is well trained. Okay. Okay. So she is not a thoroughbred horse. Hmm? So there is an article required there. A thoroughbred horse. I could never enter her in race. What's the answer? I could never enter her in a race, right? You, that's the answer. So in the paragraphs, when you see such things, whenever, you know, a noun is mentioned for the first time, it always will have to take the indefinite articles. Okay. For the second time it is mentioned, you use the definite article there because now it is already known to the person, right? We already know what is being talked about. So then you can use the definite article along with that noun thereafter. Wherever you see it thereafter, you can use the. But the first time you see it, you always use the indefinite article uh, or an accordingly. Okay. So uh, I could never enter her in a race. Okay. Even if I wanted to. But I do not want to. This one doesn't have any noun here. So you don't have to use any article. Next one is she is companion for my own pleasure. Again, here you need an article. It is, ah, yes, she is a companion for my own pleasure. Okay. I took her swimming day or two ago. Now, this is an expression like once a year. This is another expression that you use. I took her swimming a day or two ago. Okay, a day or two. Huh. This is an expression you use a day or two ago. Okay um a rupee or two right all of this is an expression so this also requires an article a day or two ago okay okay now this one is important i want you to take a look at this paragraph this is uh, <clears throat> something which is going to have a lot of definite articles so horse knows when he is going to race how does he know his breakfast was scanty Horse knows when he is going to race. Now, now do we already know the horse? We know the horse, right? First time we mentioned we did not know. Now we know, so you can go ahead and mark it as the horse. The horse knows when he is going to race. Okay. Now race here again, we mentioned race already. So you can again write the here. The horse knows when he is going to the race. Okay. How does he know? Nothing, no article required here. His breakfast was scanty. His breakfast was scanty. Again, here you do not require any article, right? He is angry about that. He does not have saddle on his back. He does not have a saddle on his back, okay? 
he does not have a towel on his back he is being led not ridden to grandstand to grandstand now here you're going to use the article the because you've already mentioned race right so grandstand is related to race since you already mentioned it and you know of that part you can use definite article with everything that uh, now is associated with the race okay i'll show you how it works so he is being led not ridden to the grandstand the grandstand because it is related to race we already mentioned race it is familiar to us hence we can use the definite article now along with everything that is connected to race so the grandstand next he is led under the grandstand into unusual special store okay now will horse have the here horse is nervous will we use the here Yes, right, because we mentioned horse already. So now every time you see horse, you can say the horse. No problem. The horse is nervous. Sometimes he does not know what to do when starting gate flies open and track is before him. Again, starting gate, track, all of that is related to race. So everywhere you can use the. Okay, sometimes he does not know what to do when the starting gate flies open and the track is before him okay if he does not begin to run instantly other horses are already ahead of him okay no no articles required anywhere because uh, uh, no scope of supplying anything anywhere okay next during race when he sees another horse just ahead of him he will try to pass him now this time race we've already mentioned race so you can use the here okay during the race when he sees another horse just ahead of him he will try to pass him hmm? Sometimes Jokey holds him back to save his energy for last stretch. Jokey, again related to the race here. So you'll use the along with Jokey also. Sometimes the Jokey holds him back to save his energy for the last stretch. Okay, because last is what? It's the superlative form. So again, you have to use the along with it. The last stretch. Eventually, the horse gets to run as fast as he can. The exercise boy watching the owner's favorite jockey riding horse. He has exercised day after day, says nothing. Okay. The everywhere here because all of them now related to the race, right? So, like I told you, anything that is related to the race now is going to now get the. Okay. Then the last one secretly, he is planning for the day when he will be the jockey himself and his horse will be the first to cross finish line okay see how everywhere we are using the now okay once one part is specified to us then everything associated with it is going to get the okay in real life sentences that is in paragraphs right that is how articles work okay i just wanted to show you this how that uh, part works uh, i hope you have understood what the point is okay okay uh, any any quick question? I'm going to close for today because we think already passed the time and I have another class to go to. Any questions you have? Any quick questions? Nothing? Okay. Okay, then. Thank you so much. All the best for your qualifiers. Meanwhile, if you have any doubts, please keep writing. Uh, we'll definitely answer that. One of us will definitely answer those questions. So thank you so much, and I'll uh, meet you after your qualifier exams. All the best. Thank you. OK, thank you, everyone.